Well, this is like an unrehearsed setup of a threaded table in a Nomad uh, CNC machine. It's called the Nomad 883. And um, what I've done is I, uh, the way it's sold to you, um, this backrest has these two screws that you tighten up and um, that's supposed to stop it from moving. Well, the thing is, is when you turn this screw that hits this, that hits your stock, this does move back. So uh, I took advantage of one of the mounting screws and normally it's just this screw like through a hole, but uh, I added this block that's uh, three eighths by a quarter by inch and a thousandths, a hundred thousandths. And um, I, used, I drilled a hole through it and then mounted it with this screw. Now I also use a, a, a dummy screw. Uh, it's, it's a, uh, that is the head right there of a quarter 20 bolt. And I just cut it just the thickness till it hit the bottom of the vise. And I epoxied that in and took into account the flats of the bolt would hit the flats of this piece, this block. Okay. So um, now when that gets forced, we're not depending on these two set screws. Okay, so now that we've established that, um, uh, I, I want, need a backrest. And um, so that when I insert a part, okay, it's that it, it just doesn't, you know, go forever. I need it to hit something. So, um, Again, one of these blocks that fit into this, that fit into that. So once I tighten these up and I tighten this with the stock in there, that will push this backrest to that screw block with the plastic in between and the block pushing uh, with all its force against the backrest. So um, I made one for there and to keep the same thicknesses, uh, I made the same for the front vise. And then um, I wanna show you something. This is called Braird's Tacky Wax. And uh, I put that on the insides of the vices, the jaws. Okay. And now, I have some like side rails so I can kind of like as a jaw here is pushing together I'm also getting some force in these areas also and now um, if I stick some stock in there of course with um, uh, with hollow tubing you have to have some kind of a spacer that's precision that's measured to the inside width of the aluminum. So then when I squeeze on this, okay, if I, this one has a spacer, so I stick that in there and squeeze that hard. It's squeezing the waxes between the vices, those little bars. And um, now I can tighten these guys and that will keep my little plastic backstop in place. Now one of the good things about this is is <clears throat> due to the thickness of this this wall here when I move this table all the way back it won't hit the back wall okay back here it will miss it by 30 thousandths of an inch. So, okay, so there's just a little wrap up of how I set up a vise. Oh, and also what I'll do is um, to make sure now that I've set this up, I would, um, I've got a piece of aluminum where I've scratched a line just perfectly on center, okay? So now I have a extra of these little one eighth by three quarter bars. 
okay? And um, tighten it, you know, exactly the same on both screws. And then I'll put this laser beam um, into the chuck and it'll follow the line of the scratch. Now, if the line is off um, and it's crooked, then I determine uh, which one of these is not pushing far enough. And then whatever that is, um, I don't know if I can, okay, I can get this off. What I would do is then use some label material <clears throat> like this, like a stick type thing. And if I'm off three thousandths of an inch, add this onto that block and then, you know, uh, cut it. Usually I'll grind it with a convoluted wheel on all four sides and the paper falls off. And then I'll put that <clears throat> where that is up against the plastic because now I want that block pushing with all its force against the back of the backrest. And then you can do this thing fast forward and back and that laser will stay right on that line. Okay, that's a wrap.